So now we know our accounting equation is assets equals liabilities plus stockholders equity. And in addition, we know that the stockholders equity is not only made up of common stock and dividends, but also we have these revenues and these expenses that become part of retained earnings that also changes that equity side. We wanna talk a little bit more about how we know when these revenues get recognized. The expenses are pretty easy, but the, the revenues a little bit trickier. In accounting, we use something called accrual accounting and the opposite of accrual accounting is cash-based. Cash-based accounting is just what you'd expect. You record revenue when you get the cash. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense because I could really manipulate that like crazy um, by saying, I'll do the work now, pay me later, or I'd get revenue later, or pay me now, and I may or may not ever finish the work, and then you still get that revenue. So we wanna make sure that revenue is recorded when services are performed. So if you're a painter and you promise to paint somebody's house, you recognize the revenue when you paint the house. Doesn't make any difference if they pay up front or pay afterwards. You recognize revenue when you do the work. Or if I'm a retailer, it's when the goods are delivered. So if you're selling on Amazon and the people send you the uh, cash in advance, you recognize the revenue when you ship the goods. Same thing if they pay you after they get the goods, the revenue still happens when you ship the goods. So we have the same date that we recognize revenue regardless of when people pay for it. So let's say we're Kohl's, a customer buys $100 merchandise and pays the cash. We're going to increase cash and increase revenue kind of at the same time. A customer buys $100 of merchandise and puts it on the Kohl's credit card. Um, when they walk out with the stuff, um, we'd increase revenue and increase accounts receivable. And AR is the way we usually abbreviate that. So when should the revenue be recognized regardless? Kind of when the sale is made, the kind of technical words is when the earnings process is virtually complete. I'm gonna leave out the word virtually. So in this case, when the person walks out with the merchandise, that's when the sales made. The other part is usually either cash or accounts receivable. But notice both of those, um, again, usually an asset. Again, it's always easiest to start with the cash side, and we'll see in a second. Why do we do that? Just to make people's life miserable. Again, uh, it's a better picture of what the company actually did. So again, I know you painted so many houses. I know you sold inventory. People walked out with inventory of a certain amount that period. I know you delivered so many pizzas that period. So it doesn't matter kind of, again, when you collect the cash, we can see what you actually did, what services you performed, what products you delivered. The other part is accounts receivable uh, is an asset. And kind of looking at the other side, we also have accounts payable is a liability. Ability. If I was on cash, then when people took the asset and had an account receivable, I really wouldn't record the account receivable. 
So the investors wouldn't know that I've got some money that should come in. And more importantly, um, if I've made uh, commitments to people, if people have come in and fixed my furnace, but I didn't pay them yet, nobody would know that I owed them. And so because we use accrual accounting, we have these accounts receivables and these accounts payables. So investors know what you owe and what people owe you. So they get a better picture again of what your company's doing. Okay. And then again, the last one is it's harder to manipulate. And some people you still can be fraudulent and embezzle with accrual accounting, but it's a lot harder. It, otherwise you just, if you, um, needed some more earnings this period, you'd tell all your customers, you know, you get a 30% discount if you pay me up front. And now all of a sudden I got a lot of cash in this year, even though I haven't done any work. Howdy partners, I'm Skipper and can't believe I had to get up from my nap for this. But while it's true you get more cash, that's correct because you really do have more cash. The problem is under cash-based accounting, you'd also recognize revenue when you haven't done diddly squat. So that's the issue here. I'll just take cat naps because something tells me I'll have to be back shortly. And um, that also, you know, results in people maybe spending that money and not ever doing the work and nobody's the wiser. So that's why they, they chose accrual accounting. For taxes, they've got a whole different uh, set of concerns. They're not afraid that you won't recognize revenue because on taxes, you don't want to see revenues. Um, so they're, they're much more cash basis than accounting is. Uh, net income becomes part of retained earnings. Again, remember earnings is another name for uh, income. Again, which is part of stockholders' equity. So once I'm done figuring out my uh, net income, that goes to my retained earnings. And so we're going to have a little retained earnings statement, which starts with your beginning retained earnings. And I'm going to abbreviate that R slash E. Somebody asked why I put slashes in between things, and I don't know, but we just do. We're going to add our net income because that increases the uh, earnings that we've retained. But those dividends that you pay, I'm going to put paid there, uh, those are going to decrease our retained earnings to get to our ending retained earnings. So again, the reason we have a separate account for revenues and expenses is so that when we do our retained earnings, there's only one increase, one decrease, and it doesn't get all muddled. We can see exactly what happened to us kind of overall that particular year per quarter or month. So life would be good, I guess, if we could just use a whole bunch of up and down arrows, but I don't know how we would ever keep track of things. And so we're going to keep this same accounting equation. We know that we have to keep that thing balanced. But if I had increases and decreases, it would drive my uh, poor accountant nuts. And think about computers, we wouldn't be able to do it on a computer. So what we want to do is we want to look at some terms to say that if we do this thing, we'll keep that accounting equation equal. And that's all we're doing here. And we're gonna come up with the words debit and credit. And these have no kind of actual meaning. They don't have anything to do with debit cards and credit cards. They just, the banks thought, oh, these sound kind of like accounting -ish names, so we're gonna use it. They have no meaning. Don't get them confused with uh, debit cards, credit cards. Don't get it to get confused with we're going to debit your account. All of that is meaningless. So what all it means is if assets go up, what has to happen to a liability or a stockholder's equity? So again, to think about our little scale, I'm going to put my little picture to raise the draw it again. If this goes up, 
this also has to go up. So I want a name for this going up that's different than a name for this going up. That's all I'm doing. So if assets go up, we're going to call that a debit. And that's all it means. And just to really drive accounting students crazy, we abbreviate that DR even though there isn't an R anywhere in that word. I think it has to do with Latin. We're not going there. So we debit it if assets go up. We need a different name for if stockholders or liability goes up. So we're going to call that credit. And so all if I say I'm going to debit the cash account, that means my cash goes up. If I say I'm going to credit my wages payable, it means wages payable goes up. That's all it means. Not One's not good, one's not bad. It's just what it is. So if I go the other way then, so to make the assets go down, again, if assets go down, then my liabilities or stockholders equity also has to go down. I'll put little arrows here. If this goes up, this goes up. They have to go, go down. Okay. So I'm going to flip the name. So if my assets go down, I'm going to call that a credit. And if my stockholders and liabilities or stockholders equity go down, I'm going to call that a debit. And that's the way I can keep my little equations balanced. If I want to increase both, I debit this, credit this. If I want to decrease both, I would credit this, debit this. So now I've got two names for things that kind of will keep my scale even. And that's all those words mean, but every transaction has to have one debit and one credit. So again, I'm gonna put in here, no kind of meaning to the words. It's not like one's a good thing, one's a bad thing. Doesn't mean that, okay? Um, and again, when we call this double entry bookkeeping, and I never know how, to, how many letters go in here, but that's close enough. Double entry bookkeeping means that every transaction has at least one debit and credit in the same amount so that little scale stays balanced. All right. Why? Why, why, why? Why in the world? Okay. Well, accounting was actually created in 1494 before there were computers. So if you think about, you know, just handwriting, especially if you look at the handwriting back in the olden days, um, the beauty to this is there's no negative signs. Because if you can imagine trying to say, okay, I now have a negative balance in cash. If I put that little minus sign there, people are going to lose it. And you think, well, I got $50,000 in cash when I really have a negative $50,000 in cash. And now a negative just means that that asset has a credit balance, which is not where it's supposed to be. So we keep increasing it. I keep debiting it. When I keep decreasing it. I keep crediting it. So I don't have to use any of those negative signs. The other thing is because I do, I have to keep everything balanced. It's a nice way kind of to uh, catch or double check, double check for errors. Because I could just say, well, just keep recording your sales and keep recording your expenses. And then wherever you are, you are. That's fine, but if you make a mistake, we don't have any way to really see, well, now my assets are off. Okay, I forgot to record the account receivable or I recorded the account receivable for a different amount of the sales. So the fact that I do everything twice in essence, by definition, will check for a bunch of errors and it kind of keeps you from making them. So again, especially before computers where the computer could find the error, it's really kind of a slick way when you, when you get to think about it um, that we can keep our records straight 
and it's again survived for over 500 years so it uh, must be doing something right now this is just a memorize okay there's again no logic and you can come up with any little memory clues or memory tricks that you want but the debits go on the left so the debits go here and the credits go on the right so the credits go here and that's just the way it is okay so debits first credits second i don't know how you can different different people have different ways if you think about just things going up debits the assets go up you debit it and we kind of like our assets better our accounting equation starts with the assets so debits first credits come second if you're reading from this way to that so then once you know this again the debits will increase our assets Oops, get up here and decrease the liabilities in stockholders equity credits will decrease your assets and increase your liabilities in stockholders equity okay i should give myself a little more room but if you think again about this this is one of those double negatives if this decreases stockholders equity let me do it over here this one increases stockholders equity revenues increase stockholders equity so revenues must also get increased this way expenses decrease stockholders equity okay. so my expenses if i increase it it decreases this one so my expenses must go here okay. so i can put this on both sides and this is revenues all right you kind of have to memorize that there's a bunch of different ways to memorize it one was get my hand in here okay one was to do the little i did this as a hang loose i don't know you all got different things so starting with the debits assets liabilities stockholders equity revenues and expenses kind of our long accounting equation assets and expenses go up the same way and they go up the debit way so you're again starting here that's your debit side and that is your whatever hand that would be that's my left hand that's my debit hand okay. um, so that's one way to do it these decrease by a debit i saw that one i remember it kind of the vols go in the same direction assets and expenses go in the same direction that's the way i remembered it was just the, the vowels um, and that works as long as you call it stockholders equity because that makes it a consonant whatever works for you check the internet they've got a hundred different memory tricks um, but you pretty well just have to memorize it because um, there's but the good news is you only have to memorize one side and you really only have to remember again like this one part here and then everything else should kind of fall in place debits first credit second um, debits on this side credits on that side to make the journal entries we to make a journal entry you put the first. debit account names so first remember name. the debits always go on the left and i made a mistake put and put asset but the amount debit goes here. first and that will end up being on the left column then we indent, a indent a little bit and you put the credit account name and this is where i noticed i made the boo-boo and so you put the credit account name and then the amount will end up on the right and that's how you make a journal entry and again that's just the way we're going to organize it rather than putting ups and downs and putting the numbers in the middle and all that. We're gonna go back to that pet grooming business. Uh, we buy that grooming table, we're gonna put it on the credit card, okay? We have a column for date um, in some of the MA, uh, My Accounting Lab, My Lab problems, you have to put that in. In my work, I don't really care. So um, we'll put this as 1-1-21. 
usually you just put it the first time, you don't repeat it. So we put the, we're going to buy uh, a table and you can be creative with this name. I'm gonna call it equipment. Usually we use a little broader term than an actual table. Table would have been okay. But that's an asset. So the equipment is an asset. And so again, to increase the asset, we're going to debit it. So we need to increase that for $1,500. Put the amount over there. Since we put it on a credit card, we're gonna call it accounts payable, which remember is a liability. So if we go up to the top to increase the liability, we need to credit it. So I'm gonna put accounts payable here. And you can abbreviate a little bit. Just make sure that I make, I know that's a P instead of a R for receivables. Make sure your handwriting's okay. And then that's 1500. So that's what we call a journal entry. You have the debit first, the credit second, and dent it just so we know you know which one's which. And then you put the amounts over here. And this will, by definition, if the accountant looks at this, they say we've increased the equipment account, we increased the accounts payable. We just know that by looking at it. And hopefully by the end of at least the semester, you'll be able to look at that and go, well, duh, of course that's what it means. So let's keep going. Uh, let's say that uh, we put 100,000 in the checking account and we receive those 10,000 shares of stock. Obviously, she meant 10 shares of stock. It really doesn't make any difference because we only care about the value. So if she had 10,000 friends or 10 friends, it still ended up being $100,000 in common stock. So again, I want it. The way we would have done this before, we increased the cash, which we know is an asset. And now we know to do that, we have to debit. And we need to increase the common stock. And we know that is uh, stockholders equity. And we can go back to our little chart and say, okay, to increase stockholders equity, we have to credit it. Again, that's why it's almost easier. If you just know this cash one, you sometimes can just wing it after that. So we put in a date here, which let's say this is on um, 2 1 21, we don't care. We get cash then, do the debits first of $100,000, and that goes to common stock for 100,000. So again, I know that's why one's not good and one's not bad because it's good I got some common stock. It's a good that I sold stock. It's not a bad thing to, to credit stuff. Um, but I got some cash. I can see I increase cash. I increase common stock just by looking at that journal entry. Then we'll go ahead and buy those 20 uh, bottles with of dog shampoo. And again, so let's go say that's to you. So I'm going to call it supplies. And Howdy again. I think I need to explain a little bit. If you buy the shampoo to sell to customers, then it's inventory. If you buy the shampoo to use on us critters, then it is supplies. If I'm in an office situation, paper and pencils, for example, would be called office supplies. But since we're going to use this to get me clean and shiny, it's going to be just supplies. Hope that helps. So to increase that, debit, and I uh, used cash, even though it's a checking account, that's still cash. It's like your debit card comes right out. So my cash is gonna go, which is an asset, is gonna go down. We know to decrease the asset, it's a credit. So on 12.3 or 2.3, we're going to get supplies for 60 times, oh, $60 total. So it's going to be $3 a bottle. It's a little lighter. For $60, $60. And so supplies, right? And that's going to reduce my cash. 
So again, here I've got two assets. I can tell this one went up, that one went down because of the way this works. So super duper. So um, we've kind of already talked about this, but I'll, so I'll go through this really quickly, but we've already talked about. So how does revenue change equity? Revenue increases equity. So how do you increase revenues? You're gonna credit it. Again, that will kind of increase that stockholder's equity. How do you how do expenses chain equity? Every time you have to pay a bill uh, for wages or something, that decreases your equity. And so to decrease stockholders' equity, again, you debit it to decrease that stockholders' equity. I keep putting my splash in the wrong place. All right. So now we can kind of handle those last part of the example we had the other day. Um, so now I've got that customer who comes in and gives you some cash and you groom their pet. Okay? So we'll say this is on the fourth. They pay you cash. So we're going to increase cash, which is a debit, which is an asset. So it's a debit. And now this is where that revenue comes in. We want to increase the revenue, which you can either remember outright or you can do the separate thing, which also increases stockholders' equity, which means you credit it. So my cash, and this is why, again, it's almost always easier to start with the cash. The cash we know is debit because I got $100 in cash. So my revenue must be a hundred dollars. This was why it's so important to uh, go back and call that other one supplies. So I used two bottles of that dog shampoo. They're either really little dog bottles or that's a really big dog. Let's say it's a big old sheep dog and we used two bottles of that shampoo to groom that pet. Remember those were three dollars each and I used two bottles so that's six dollars that I used. When I use it, that's the expense. And that's why, again, it's a cruel accounting because I expense it when I use it. Um, so my expenses have to go up, which means it's a debit. Another way to kind of think about it is I know I take revenues minus expenses. So again, I kind of always remembered the, the vowels went the same. So this has to be a debit. And I kind of backed into the revenues. Whatever works for you is fine with me. I, you don't have to tell me what you're thinking. So on the 21st, I'm going to have, I'm going to just go on shampoo expense. And to start with, I'll be real generous on what you call the account. Later on, we'll get a little more persnickety. But you do have to, whatever you call this up here, whoops, up here, this is what you use. So since I called it supplies up here, I got to call it supplies down here. So I take it out of the same account because now I'm saying I don't have 20 bottles anymore. And I keep leaving that L out. Uh, I don't have 20 bottles anymore. Now I've only got, what, 18 bottles. And so I've used $6 up. So while I don't care to call this shampoo expense or supplies expense down here, this account has to be the same thing you do up here so that they match up. All right, so that's the way journal entries work. Um, basically, you just have to memorize it and there's no better way to say it. So to increase an account, um, that's your assets and your expense. If we want to, uh, we credit an account for an increase, for our liabilities, our stockholders' equity, equity, and because it, it's increasing stockholders' equity, that's also our revenue. So however you wanna remember that is fine with me. Uh, the advantages, kind of we keep that journal by date, and notice those were called journal entries, so it's a journal, um, and if you ever work more 
fancy when you kept a diary when you got a little older you kept a journal instead but those go by date and so our our journal goes the same thing same way so you've got everything that happens in order so if somebody comes in and says i had a problem with something i did three days ago you can go find it and so you can kind of see kind of what's happening in the company um, kind of as you go and when i'm talking to stem i'm talking about journal entries the diff of kind of just doing journal entries is when you get to the financial statements, you're gonna to need to know, you know, what's your total cash balance uh, at that period? What's your total revenue uh, for the period? You wanna know what your total expenses are. I'm just gonna put et cetera for the period and sometimes the period's a month sometimes you uh just do every quarter sometimes it's every year at a minimum you have to know what you do for the year um so somehow or other we've got to get from a whole a diary of everything we've done to what do we have now what's kind of more of the snapshot of what we've got and so we're going to add a, another step And that is, we're going to keep what's called a general ledger. And this is all your transactions by account. So while the journal keeps track of what you do day to day, the, the ledger will say, this is how much cash we got today. This is how much accounts receivable we expect to collect. So it's got it all summarized. Um, so there's kind of two steps. But this is, so we really, the first thing we do is we do journal entries as the transaction occurs. Um, I'm running out of room here, it happens. Oops, oops. All right. So that's step one. Then step two is we're going to post, which is just copy, um, from our journal, from our general journal to this general ledger. And this is where you'll learn real shortly. It's really great when you have a computer. It's a real pain doing it by hand, but we'll have you do it by hand a couple times. And then after that, the uh, my lab will work it for you. So anytime you copy something, you have a chance for doing getting some errors. And so then the third step is we're gonna do what's called a trial balance, which just makes sure um, that your general ledger that your that everything still balances the scale still balances and that way if you transpose a number you do something screwy you put one in one place not the other it's okay um to do a general ledger for most of what we're going to do we're going to use something called a t account because it looks like a t and so we'll say like cash and then when we're posting, uh, we're going to say, you know, we had that hundred thousand dollars we deposited um, in that example before. Let's see if I got this handy. So we had this hundred thousand dollars cash here. We spent sixty here, and we got a hundred here. So the way that's going to show up is we got cash. We put the cash in there. We put the we spent 60 then, which would be a credit. We then got 100 for uh, when we did the grooming. So our balance in that account, you add the debits and subtract the credits because this increases, this decreases. So 100 minus 60 
would be 99940 maybe plus 100 would give you 100040 then that's your balance so that's how we're going to generally do it on my accounting lab they got the fancy looking ones but this is the, kind of the shorthand way to do a um, general ledger and we'd actually have an account for every account that we messed with so here we would have one for common stock we would have one for supplies we'd have another one for revenue we'd have one for supplies expense and again if we looked at our supplies that's why i have to use the same account we put in 60 there we took out six there so that's how we know we'd have 54 dollars worth of shampoo still laying on the shelf a term we're going to use is normal balance and that's as long as you don't do anything screwy we should increase the assets more than we decrease them. We should kind of increase all the accounts more than we decrease them. So the normal balance for an account is what they should have in there if everything goes well. So cash, for example, should normally have a debit balance. If you have a credit balance, that means you've overdrawn. You're, it's not always a good thing. So the normal balance is what you should have in there, that's, that's the word normal, but it ends up being, um, again, the way you kind of increase the account. Because we always, we usually have negative balances, we always should increase something more than we decrease it. So again, that would be a debit for cash and expenses. Well, I was hoping I wouldn't have to come back here, but she meant to say all assets have a normal debit balance cash is an asset so that's not totally incorrect but all assets have a debit balance as a normal balance i think we're done for the day at least from my part so um, catch you on another video and if you look up above that's kind of the same thing we had for that for how to increase and it's a credit balance for liabilities, stockholders equity, revenues. So if I talk about a normal balance, those would be the normal balances. Uh, the trial balance uh, just um, lists all accounts and hopefully your debits equal your credits debits equal your credits then you do your financial statements and we'll talk about those more but that's the whole point of basically everything you're doing is to come up with some financial statements okay. so summary of the steps we journalize all right so that will be by date we then post to the ledger and the ledger is then by account we're just reorganizing things we do a trial balance just to make sure our debits really do equal our credits otherwise we know we screwed up and then last but not least we'll do our financial statements it's kind of again, that finish line that's what we're trying to do so we'll stop that here and we'll go to an example if you want to do that on your own fine if you want to do an example with the narration that's fine too